Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Sorry I'm a little bit late tonight. I was on the phone with a long, a long phone call. But we're here now. And we're going to be reading out of Isaiah 33, 17. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. The whole verse says, your eyes will see the king in his beauty. They will see the land that is far off. And he's talking to the Jews, but we'll, we'll see this too. Let's read this in context here. Start in verse 12. And the people shall be like the burnings of lime. Like thorns cut up, they shall be burned in the fire. Hear you who are afar off what I have done. And you who are near, acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has seized the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? He who walks righteously and speaks uprightly... He who despises the gain of oppressions, that would be extra high interest, by the way, who gestures with his hands, refusing bribes, who stops his ears from hearing of bloodshed and shuts his eyes from seeing evil, he will dwell on high. His place of defense will be the fortress of rocks. Bread will be given him. His water will be sure. Your eyes will see the king in his beauty. That's Jesus. They will see the land that is a far, off, very far off. That's Jerusalem, or even the, even better, the home country, heaven. Your heart will meditate on terror. Where is the scribe? Where is he who weighs? Where is he who counts the towers? You will not see a fierce people, a people of obscure speech, beyond perception of a stammering tongue that you cannot understand. Look upon Zion, the city of our appointed feasts. Your eyes will see Jerusalem, a quiet home, a tabernacle that will not be taken down. Not one of its stakes will ever be removed, nor will any of its cords be broken. But there, our, there the majestic Lord will be for us a place of broad rivers and streams, in which no galley with oars will sail, nor majestic ships pass by. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king, he will save us. The more you know about Christ, the less will you be satisfied with superficial views of him. And the more deeply you study his transactions in the eternal covenant, his engagements on your behalf as the eternal surety, and the fullness of his grace which shines in all his offices, the more truly you will see the king in his beauty. We see him in his beauty in the book. It all comes from the Bible, and we learn more of this by digging deeper in these scriptures and seeing the amazing interactions he has in here. I love this devotion already. Be much in such outlooks. Long more and more to see Jesus. Meditate and contemplate. Our meditation and contemplation are often like windows of agate and gates of carbuncle, through which we behold the Redeemer. Meditation puts the telescope to the eye and enables us to see Jesus after a better sort than we could have seen him if we had lived in the days of his flesh. Now that's interesting he says that. Because Peter says, we all live with him. We did all these things. We experienced all these things. But now we have the more sure word of those things. So even back then, even though he had personal experiences, he was pointing everybody to the Bible. Pointing them to the word. We have the more sure word. The same thing applies here. Would that our conversations were more in heaven. And that we were more taken up with the person. The work, the beauty of our incarnate Lord. More meditation and the beauty of the king would flash upon us with more resplendence. We would start to emulate his qualities more. Beloved, it is very probable that we shall have such a sight of our glorious king as we never had before when we come to die. Many saints in dying have looked up from amidst the stormy waters and have seen Jesus walking on the waves of the sea and heard him say, It is I, be not afraid. Ah, yes, when the tenement begins to shake. And the clay falls away. We see Christ through the rifts. And between the rafters, the sunlight of heaven comes streaming in. But if we want to see face to face the king in his beauty, we must go to heaven for the sight. Or the king must come here in person. Oh, that he would come on the wings of the wind. He is our husband, and we are widowed by his absence. He is our brother, dear and fair, and we are lonely without him. 
Thick veils and clouds hang between our souls and their true life. When shall the day break and the shadows flee away? O oh, long expected day, begin. He's longing for the day of the Lord. Not the day of the Lord as in the day of judgment, but the day of the Lord when he returns for his church. Those of us that believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, we know. We know and we found the verses and we believe them. They make sense to us. They matter. This whole, the whole thing matters. We're looking for it. We're looking for him while we're here, while we're waiting, while we're patiently waiting and eagerly expecting. We're learning more about him and then emulating those qualities. Learning more and being more like him, like the people we're supposed to be. Every day that goes by, we long for him more. We look up for him more. We wait on him more. But what I have noticed in my personal life is I have more patience. And that's not for me. That's from him. I'm finding myself becoming more peaceful and more calm about it. More, more relaxed. And instead of focusing on the negative, focusing on my troubles, focus, focusing on the things of this world, I'm focused more on him. Where can I become more like him? How can I change to be more like him? And what can I, more can I learn about him? A bride should be completely overwhelmed with all the things of her Lord. And that's us. It's an amazing thing to be saved. It's an amazing thing to read this book and it makes sense to you. And we know where all this is leading. It's an amazing thing to have that understanding. It's a beautiful thing. If only we could get out of our own way and focus more on what this Bible is telling us. Learn more about our Lord. Make him more of our focus. Now, Please don't misunderstand that the day holds many things. There's constantly stuff that has to be done, people that have to be dealt with and taken care of, tasks that have to be done. The Lord understands. He knows. The things that pertain to life. But when we have the time, when we are able to get away from all the day's trials and all the distractions, we should be fully absorbed with him, absorbed with this. And, and the further along we go, the more we grow, the more we advance, the more this becomes more important than everything else. Oh, well, there's still stuff that has to be done, and we still go do it. But this becomes our focus. As it should. He becomes our focus as it should. That's how it should be. It is a glorious thing to be in the Lord Jesus Christ. And a glorious thing to have a, a hope and have a future to look forward to, to, have, to know there's something better after this life. And we have a part in that. We have a claim. We have an inheritance. Because Jesus Christ is our Lord. He is our Savior. And nothing else will do. Put Jesus in the forefront of your mind and your life. Watch how, how different you look at things. Watch how different you, you, you address things. Watch how different things, this stuff means, means something different to you. If not, most stuff won't be as important. Some things will be much more important. You'll be naturally drawn to the things of God and the people of God. Can't help it. It's one of the side effects of being a, a true Christian, a born again believer. Look to Jesus every day. Wait on him patiently. Eagerly, eagerly expect him. We know we're in the season. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of the clock finishing off its last few minutes. And then we're gone. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you in the next video.